on World News Tonight. Imminent war. US President Joe Biden believes that major conflict is on the horizon at the Ukrainian border and it may be a matter of time before an all-out war breaks loose. Meanwhile, ammunition flies into enemy territory on both sides as heavy shelling causes more than just physical damage to Ukraine. Climate calamity. Brazil picks up the pieces following disastrous landslides and heavy floods. Many longing to return to a home that is now under tons of earth. As the country grapples with Mother Nature, rescue efforts race against time to save what's left. Ottawa on alert. Following the final stern warning, police in Canada have decided to make good of their oath on security as forces make fresh efforts on subduing the Freedom Convoy Trucker Alliance. Despite this, it seems that the government is still unable to quell the voices of those sick of restrictions. And grand reveal. In preparation for the upcoming race season, legendary automobile company Ferrari revealed their latest motorsport marvel, leaving to 40 fans in awe of the new shades of colour. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening, thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We begin tonight's broadcast with stark new warnings of the Russian invasion. The US is pulling no punches diplomatically as the country insists that war on the Ukrainian border is imminent. And it may even have begun right now as new reports emerge confirming massive shelling in the area, causing damage to infrastructure and also causing panic amid citizens. How high is the threat of a Russian invasion right now? It's very high. U.S. President Joe Biden said on Thursday there was now every indication Russia was planning to attack Ukraine. His comments came after reports Ukrainian forces and Russian-backed rebels traded fire across a tense front line. And America's top diplomat warned the flare-up could be used as a pretext by Moscow to send in troops. Our information indicates clearly that these forces, including ground troops, aircraft, ships, are preparing to launch an attack against Ukraine in the coming days. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken addressed the U.N. Security Council and said that American intelligence believed Russia was ready to choreograph a false justification to launch its attack. It could be a fabricated so-called terrorist bombing inside Russia, the invented discovery of a mass grave, a staged drone strike against civilians, or a fake, even a real, attack using chemical weapons. Blinken pleaded with Moscow to choose diplomacy over conflict. Diplomacy is the only responsible way to resolve this crisis. Russia denies planning to invade its neighbor and said this week it was pulling back some of the more than 100,000 troops it had massed near the frontier. Brazilian... And Russia's defense ministry on Thursday released a video statement claiming more Russian units were leaving the area near the border. But Washington says Russia is not withdrawing and was in fact sending more forces. Biden told reporters a Russian attack could be imminent. I have my sense this will happen in the next several days. Ukraine and pro-Russian rebels gave conflicting accounts of shelling across the front in the Donbass separatist region. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said the pro-Russian forces had shelled a kindergarten in what he called a big provocation. The separatists, for their part, accused government forces of opening fire on their territory four times in the past 24 hours. The details could not be established independently. Video footage released by Ukrainian police showed a hole through a brick wall in a room scattered with debris and children's toys. Separate images showed emergency workers escorting small children and teachers from a building. Just over a day after the devastating landslides in Brazil, families pick up the pieces and go on a hunt for the survivors of the calamity. Some trying to dig up what used to be their only home that they've ever known. The disastrous event continues to rack up deaths still. In Petropolis, Brazil, residents gather in what used to be their neighborhood. With shovels, buckets and hoes, looking for the remains of their loved ones buried underneath the rubble and mud. A resident named Hilda lost her nephew and his daughter. Everything is lost. There are no signs of them. The only thing we found are clothing and debris. More than 500 rescue workers were still searching for possible survivors Thursday, according to emergency services, after devastating mudslides swept through Brazil's eastern city of Petropolis, killing over 100 people. Officials say at least 13 children are among the dead. Longtime resident Maria Jose Dante de Arajo is in complete shock. 
I've lived here for 44 years. I've never seen anything like this. To die this way, my friends have all gone. My friends all died. I'm very sad. My heart is with those buried beneath the dirt. The downpours, which on Tuesday alone exceeded the average for the entire month of February, caused mudslides that buried homes, flooded streets, washed away cars and buses, and left gashes hundreds of yards wide on the region's mountainsides. More than 420 people had to leave their homes, taking shelter in local schools and other makeshift accommodations. Rio Governor Claudio Castro compared the damage to a war zone on Wednesday. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro has promised to help the region and said he would visit the affected areas on Friday after his return from an official trip to Russia and Hungary. France's announcement that it will withdraw its troops from Mali was anticipated by many in the West African nation, where Malians have protested the presence of soldiers from the former colonial power. But politicians and experts worry the French pullout will result in a security vacuum that will embolden jihadi groups to increase their power. France and its allies fighting Islamist militants in Mali said on Thursday they would begin their military withdrawal from the country. French President Emmanuel Macron insisted the pullback did not constitute a failure of its nine-year mission. La France, is France intervened in Mali, first to fight terrorism, and secondly, through the request of a sovereign state and states in the region. It's this second condition that changes today. The victory over terrorism is not possible if it is not promoted by the state itself. Why are we deciding to leave today? Because the junta in power in Mali does not have this as a priority anymore. The move has raised concerns of an emboldened insurgency across the Sahel region. But Macron said neighboring Niger had agreed to house European forces fighting Islamists. He added that the withdrawal from Mali would take four to six months. France has had troops in Mali since 2013, when it intervened to drive back Islamist militants advancing on the capital. The Islamists have since regrouped and are waging an increasingly bloody insurgency across the region. Relations between Paris and Bamako have deteriorated since the ruling military junta went back on an agreement to organize an election in February and proposed holding power until 2025. It has also deployed Russian private military contractors, which some European countries have said is incompatible with their mission. A key question still to be answered will be the futures of 14,000 strong UN peacekeeping and EU missions. And under which get- EU foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell said the bloc would reach out to Bamako to discuss the future of its training missions. The answer will come in the next days. Successive coup in Mali, Chad and Burkina Faso, all ex-French colonies, have weakened France's West African alliances. Diplomats warned that spiraling violence could give fresh impetus to migration from West Africa to Europe. The EU have welcomed more than 40 African leaders to Brussels in an effort to reassert its influence on a continent where China and Russia had made hefty investment inroads and where many felt let down by Europe's COVID-19 vaccines rollout. We have our World News Special Correspondent Inuka Ponso from Cleve in Germany for more. Inuka? Yes, Anurati. Senegalese President and African Union Chairman Macky Sall said this is the summit of a new start and a renovated partnership and also that they hope that talks will bear fruits on all the major themes, be it peace and security, the fight against terrorism, but also the financing of African economies with the relocation of special drawing rights and many other issues. The European Union will offer several packages of support at the summit to bolster health education and stability in Africa and will pledge half of a new 300 billion euro investment drive launched to rival China Belt and Roads Initiative. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen told African leaders that they need them to tell us what the needs are and what the needs for the best of the people are. European and other wealthy nations were also heavily criticized for hoarding protective equipment and later vaccines during the pandemic with some African leaders saying the slow pace of donations could lead to vaccine apartheid. There was also dismay over Europe's travel bans on South Africa after the Omicron variant was detected there last year. 
Meanwhile, dangerous weathers have been affecting multiple areas of Europe. Gale force winds have swept across northern Germany, wreaking havoc for commuters traveling by rail and road and causing power outages. Police have reported at least two fatalities. Back to you on Radhi. All right, thank you. That was other than a world news special correspondent in a from Cleve in Germany. While there may have been some controversy stirred on by Republicans in favor of Trump due to the recent filings of subpoenas against Hillary Clinton-backed officials, it seems he is under fire yet again as the New York Attorney General has ordered for testimonies of Trump and two of his grown children in latest attempts at probing the former president's actions. A New York judge ruled on Thursday that former U.S. President Donald Trump and two of his adult children can be questioned under oath deciding in favor of New York Attorney General Letitia James. The judge ruled that Trump, his son Donald Trump Jr., and his daughter Ivanka Trump all must sit for depositions in the probe into their family's company. The judge said James had the clear right to question the Trumps after having uncovered what the judge called copious evidence of possible financial fraud, giving the Trumps three weeks to submit to questioning. The AG's investigation partially overlaps with a criminal probe, now led by Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, in which the Trump Organization and its longtime chief financial officer pleaded not guilty last July to tax fraud charges. Trump has called Letitia James' probe a political witch hunt and is suing to try to stop it. The Trumps could refuse to answer questions and take the fifth, as Donald Trump's other adult son Eric Trump did when he invoked his constitutional right against self-incrimination more than 500 times during questioning by the Attorney General's office in 2020. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Following the stern warnings provided by Canadian police, they began arresting leaders of the trucker-led protests that had choked the capital streets for three weeks and provoked the government into calling on rarely used emergency powers. Despite the freezing temperatures, protesters Jean-Philippe and Gabriel are refusing to leave their unusual post. Like these two hot tubbers, hundreds of truckers opposing coronavirus mandates have grouped together in the so-called Freedom Convoy, blocking roads in downtown Ottawa for nearly three weeks. The movement has become the inspiration behind anti-government protests in other countries while forcing U.S. border crossings to shut. Canada's government has had to call on rarely used powers, with under fire Prime Minister Justin Trudeau this week invoking the Emergencies Act. While threats of fines and jail have helped to sway demonstrators away from the frontier, truckers have remained defiant back in Ottawa where police have now started erecting barriers around government buildings. Officers say they're starting to clamp down, setting up 100 checkpoints across downtown and refusing access to individuals without legitimate reasons to be there. We want people to realize that it is coming to an end and not, in, not require us to escalate in terms of how we look to deal with demobilizing. Late on Thursday evening, police were seen arresting several people including the event fundraisers and organizers. It came after protesters had loudly honked their horns in unison earlier in the day in violation of a court order. Moderna has caused alarm in Africa as the jab maker has shown signs of intending to enforce a patent in the region, which would detrimentally affect the production of vaccines within the hub as it limits the freedom with which it may be produced. Moderna has applied for patents in South Africa relating to its COVID-19 vaccine, prompting fears the company could eventually seek to prevent a new African vaccine manufacturing hub from making its own version of the mRNA shot. A group of 60 Africa-based charity raised concerns about the patent applications. Petro Tablanche is the chief executive of South Africa's Afrogen Biologic, which used the publicly available sequence of Moderna's vaccine to make its own version of the vaccine. The company plans to start making and distributing across Africa in November. In terms of freedom to operate, there, e, there, are, there are patents filed in South Africa and other low and middle income countries by Moderna that unless those are revoked, or uh, voluntary licenses are awarded or Moderna will waive it, 
it will impact on our freedom to operate. And these are patents with broad claims such as any vaccine containing mRNA. That is problematic for a whole platform uh, mm. to have freedom to operate. A spokesperson for Moderna said the move would not block vaccine distribution in Africa and reiterated Moderna's October 2020 pledge not to enforce its COVID-19 related patents during the coronavirus pandemic. But charities fear it will enforce them when COVID-19 is declared endemic, according to Tian Johnson, founder of the African Alliance. Tablanche said they had not yet received communication from Moderna yet. I am positive that we would be able to engage in discussions with Moderna to ensure that low- and middle-income countries have the freedom to operate. The Africa Vaccine Hub has WHO backing as part of a pilot project to give poor and middle-income countries the know-how to make COVID-19 vaccines. Currently, the continent is forced to import 99% of its vaccine needs due to poor domestic manufacturing capacity. Despite citizens saying no to the dynamic zero-COVID policy and also tighter restrictions, it seems the freedom may be backfiring in Hong Kong as caseloads continue to get heavier with the infection rate more than doubling in a few days' time. Hong Kong hospitals continued to treat COVID-19 patients in their car parks and outdoor spaces as the city's battle against the virus intensified on Thursday. Beds were more than 90% full in hospitals that remained overwhelmed. Authorities apologised and reported new cases had multiplied by 60 times so far in February. And media reported that testing would become compulsory for everyone in the global financial hub from March. Health authorities reported a record 6,116 confirmed cases on Thursday, up from 4,285 the previous day. They also reported 24 new deaths. The jump in cases is the biggest test yet of the city's dynamic zero COVID policy. But leader Carrie Lam said the city cannot surrender to the virus. Schools, gyms, cinemas and most public venues are shut, with many office employees working from home. But many residents are fatigued by the harsh restrictions imposed to protect them against the pandemic even as most other major cities in the world adjust to living with the virus. Media reported that from next month there will be compulsory testing and, citing unidentified sources, said the government planned to test up to one million people each day, fining those who failed to comply 10,000 Hong Kong dollars. The government did not respond to a request for comment. In a move to free up beds for isolation, Lam said late on Wednesday she had spoken with local hotel owners and planned to make up to 10,000 hotel rooms available for COVID-19 patients. Elon Musk has launched a barrage of complaints against the US Securities and Exchange Commission, claiming the unrelenting and endless attacks aimed towards him is due to his very public criticism of the US government. Tesla and its CEO, Elon Musk, on Thursday accused the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission of harassing them with what they called an endless and unrelenting investigation, arguing that it is meant to punish Musk for being an outspoken critic of the government. The accusation came in the form of a letter from Alex Spiro, a lawyer representing both Tesla and Musk, to U.S. District Judge Allison Nathan in Manhattan. Spiro added, enough is enough. The SEC declined to comment. Thursday's letter escalates Musk's battle with regulators as they scrutinize his social media posts and Tesla's treatment of workers, including accusations of discrimination. The SEC sued Musk back in 2018 after he tweeted he had funding secured to potentially take his electric car company private at $420 per share, when in reality a buyout was not close. Tesla and Musk settled by agreeing to each pay $20 million in civil fines and to let Tesla lawyers vet some of Musk's communications in advance, including tweets that could affect Tesla's stock price. In addition, Musk gave up Tesla's chairmanship. On February 7th, Tesla's disclosure said it had received a subpoena from the SEC about its compliance with the 2018 settlement. Spiro has asked Judge Nathan to schedule a conference to find out why the SEC is issuing subpoenas unilaterally without court approval and why the settlement money isn't being distributed to Tesla shareholders. 
Separately on Thursday, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration opened a formal probe into Tesla Model 3 and Model Y vehicles after receiving complaints about unexpected braking tied to its autopilot system. Welcome back to World News Tonight. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. The Federal Reserve appears to be taking a moderate approach to monetary tightening in the US, but to tackle inflation, one top Fed official is calling for aggressive rate hikes. Australians welcome the move to ease more COVID-19 curves and relax social distancing rules ahead of the full reopening of the country's international borders after nearly two years, boosting business confidence battered by stop-start lockdowns. The Chinese mainland reported 40 new confirmed locally transmitted COVID-19 cases and 47 imported cases. According to the National Health Commission, China is still trying to maintain the zero COVID policy. Two people were trapped on a ferry that was engulfed in a blaze as it sailed between Greece and Italy, after scores of other passengers and crew were rescued. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us on Monday for more news around the globe. In case you've missed any of the stories we had tonight, you can rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight with a look into the latest reveal of Ferrari's new motorsport marvel. Thank you for watching. Good night.